always here the problem is have we revealed you through our attitudes through our spiritual relationship with you and if we have then we can sing that song surely the presence of the Lord is in this place certainly Lord I think that's all of our desires is to let you be manifest in our lives and I hope this morning that we will be submissive to your Holy Spirit and we pray, Lord, that you just do a work in our hearts as believers. Perchance there's one here, Lord, that's not a believer. Then, God, I would pray that you bring light into their soul. May they see with the eyes of their hearts that there is a God, and that's you, and that there is an eternity, two places, heaven or hell, and it's their choice. I pray you reveal that to them this morning. And I want to say, God, give me the spirit of wisdom as I rightly divide the word of God here this morning. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good to see you. We're glad you're here. If you're visiting with us, we're glad to have you in God's house. We always appreciate our visitors, and I hope you've been welcomed. And we welcome you as pastor, and we're glad you're here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how God hath revealed himself. And uh, so in this passage of Scripture, uh, you will find it is in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Those are the two Scriptures that I'll use, and then I will pull in from other places. But uh, when God reveals himself, and uh, so that I, I, I looked at that, when I saw that, when God reveals himself, then I wanted, and I made a question of how God reveals himself. How does God reveal himself, I could say. And uh, so uh, in Hebrews chapter number 1 and uh, verse 1 and 2, uh, it says this. God, who at sundry times and of course, that sundry times means long ago, long ago, many, many years ago. And, uh, and then at sundry times, and in divers' manners, in divers' manners, long ago, many times, in many ways. That's what the Hebrew is saying. You're probably Paul. In many, many ways. Spake. He spake verbally. He spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. And, and that he has. And we have record of that, right? We've got record in the Old Testament of what we call the major prophets. And we've got minor prophets. And so we've got God spoke through them in times past. And then he says, hath in these last days. Now, last days, of course, begin, you say, well, we are in the last days. Well, let me remind you, we've been in the last days, the very day that Jesus came. Did you see it in the Scripture? It's right there in the Scripture. Hath in these last days spoken unto us. Writer, probably maybe Paul has spoken to us by his son. So the last days began then. They said, and we always say, well, we're in the last days. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been in the last days for 1,980 years. That's how long the church days have been. So we've been in the last days that long. We see now the progression of it is getting worse and worse, and we're seeing storms, we're seeing diseases, we're seeing murders. We're seeing all this stuff that he said would come to the past because he said in the last days, peerless times shall come, right? We're seeing that. So we are now maybe in the climax of the last days. Could be. So he has spoken these last days by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. 
Now, I want to ask you this question this morning. Have you seen God today? Not God per se, but have you seen the evidence of God? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't have no problem seeing evidence of God, do you? Do you look up in the sky this morning? It's beautiful blue. I think the sun, well, I know it came up because I had to put my sun visor down coming in here. So the sun was up. So I see God in nature. I see God in the trees and the leaves. And my goodness, it's amazing, you know, how God has revealed himself. And I'm going to talk about that in depth here in just a moment. But uh, now God spoke to Adam and Eve verbally, did he not? I mean, he was in the garden, and he was walking in the garden the cool of the day, and he spoke, and he said, Adam, where are you at? So that was a verbal conversation that he had. With now, that, that, that was before, of course, that Adam and Eve had sinned, that before they had disobeyed God's commandments and before they broke his word, but he had verbal fellowship with them. I don't know what God looked like. And I, I don't, Adam and Eve, you know, they were celestial at this point in time because they had not known sin. So they were still in a celestial state. And so then they had this verbal conversation. And then, of course, you know the story. Adam and Eve sinned and hid themselves and uh, couldn't face God. And then it was a different story. Then now they become not celestial. They become terrestrial. They become human beings with a sinful nature. Now they're sinful nature. I'll, I'll, uh, so anyway, we know that uh, uh, God spoke to them. And so for when you look at from Genesis to Malachi, you've got 4,000 years here. You've got 4,000 years that God spake. And he spake verbally to, Abraham, I mean, to Adam and Eve, probably. And then he spoke through dreams. He spoke through visions and, and various ways. And, uh, but I, I want to talk about one point that I want to make here. And, uh, God revealed himself and I thought, well, how did he really do it? At the beginning of it, wh wh where did he, after the sin of Adam, after Adam and Eve sinned, I said, wh where did you really view, reveal yourself to? And so th this is where I, I discovered in Genesis 3.11. And Genesis 3.11 says this. And he said, he asked where Adam was at, right? And he said, we were naked and we couldn't face you. Look at the question. Who told you? Who told you that? That's the birth of the conscience. That's the birth of the conscience in a human being. He knew, he and Adam, uh, or Adam and Eve knew that they had done something wrong, right? Amen. Every human being on this planet has a conscience. Animals don't have a conscience. Every human being has one. You have one this morning. I have one this morning. God put it in there. And we know right from wrong, correct? That's what it's saying. It's, it, that conscience is simply there. It's moral principles that govern our thoughts and our actions. That's built in us. And we got it from Adam. So that's how God reveals himself. Now, uh, I don't care if you're a, 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 a pedophile. Maybe for the first time you do such a horrible thing as that, I surely you would feel guilty over it, wouldn't you? Don't you think the first time? And then, but now your conscience can be damaged, right? You, it can be seers. Your conscience can be seers, and that's callous to where nothing can penetrate it. It can be evil, and of course that means demon possession. So it can that can happen. And so there can be a good conscience and there can be a pure conscience and there can be a purge conscience. There's just all kinds of conscience. But let me tell you, when you do wrong, even as a sinner, you know you, you, know you feel guilt, right? I mean, when I was a sinner and I did wrong, I still felt guilt and felt bad about it. 
But then even after I've been saved now and I do something wrong, and boy, I want to tell you, God speaks to me what? Through my conscience. I'll do something, and it tells me it's wrong. It's wrong. So God does reveal himself through the conscience. I believe that. Now, in Romans 9.1, he said, I say the truth in Christ. Paul writing to the Roman Christians, I lie not. He says, I'm not telling a lie. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit. It's a great witness. It's a great witness, either a good witness or a bad witness. On this case, Paul said it's a good witness because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with my conscience. And when, when the Holy Spirit says to your conscience, everything's all right, that's good, isn't it? But if something gets messed up about it, then the Holy Spirit says, that's not good, right? Oh, now I've got to face God with that. But aren't you glad we got Jesus Christ who sets the Father's right hand that all I've got to do is confess what I did and he cleanses me from it, forgives me of it? Amen. Well, I'm glad of that. I'm glad my conscience is not seared. I'm glad my conscience is not evil, not an evil conscience. I've, I've committed things evil, but, but still, it's not that. It's not an evil conscience. So that is how God reveals himself to us. Now, God has revealed himself in another way. Well, this way is through the creation. When you look at Psalm 19 and 1 and Psalms 148 and 6, and I'm going to read these scriptures because they're so good. The heavens declare the glory of God. So not only does our conscience reveal God, the creation reveals God because the heavens, what you see out there and what I see out there with the eye, and thank God for a telescope, thank God for a microscope. A microscope can show us little things that we can't see with our eye, and yet God made those little bitty wiggly things under a microscope, and yet if you get, to, uh, you get the Hubble telescope and you can look way beyond in the galaxies out there, I want to tell you, don't they declare the glory of God? Oh, yeah, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament, which is the sky, shows his handiwork. This is not a Big Bang theory. This is God's work. I see God, and when I see the sun, I see the moon, I see the stars, I see God. That is God's handiwork. It declares there is a God. Look at Psalms 148 and 1. I just love this. Praise you, the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. I shared that with a, with a staff uh, Tuesday morning. Praise you, the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. We don't praise the Lord enough. We just don't praise him enough. We just step haphazardly and we should be praising God because of the creation that we can see and, and give glory to God for it. We just don't praise him enough. Praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord. He repeats it. Praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord. From the heavens, praise him in the heights. And then he goes on to say this. Praise ye him, his angels. Do you believe the angels praise the Lord? Are you praising the Lord right now in your spirit? Amen. So we praise the Lord in our spirit. But it, well, I don't know what's going on in your spirit, but I'll tell you one thing. What ought to be going on in your spirit is praising God. We're here for one reason. We come to this church, the house of God, to praise ye the Lord. And I mean, we do it in here, in here. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye him, angels, praise him, all his hosts, all the heavenly hosts up there, praise God. And boy, I want to tell you, God's looking for people down here to do him that too. He's wanting you to praise God. He's wanting me to praise God. Praise ye him, son. He's even asked a son. That is a personification of the son giving life to an inanimate object. Even the sun praises God. Even the moon praises God. Praise him, all ye stars of light. He calls them by name, Amen. He calls them by name. And he says, praise him, you heavens of heaven. And we live in one galaxy called the Milky Way galaxies, and there's a whole bunch of galaxies out there. Someday I'm going to visit them, and so will you. Amen? 
Man won't be confined to time to space. I'll be uh, equal with the angels, and we will just see what. And then we'll know how to praise God. I want to get in shape. I want to get in, in shape down here to do it because I know when I get up there, I'll be able to do it. Greater than I've ever done it in my life, and greater than you've ever done it in your life. And he says, "You heavens of heaven, and you waters that are above the heavens." Even the water, see, he's personifying this. I mean, this is giving life to an animate object. He's just talking about that. I know the sun don't praise the Lord and all that, but yet it's inanimate. I mean, if, but we can, but we can praise him. Let him praise his name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He spake the moon into existence. He spake the sun into existence. He spake the stars into existence. He spake them all into existence. I'm so sorry for uh, Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson. That poor man is so smart. He don't know God. Do you know you can be too smart to know God? He's so smart. He don't know God. He said we come from stardust. He said all that, you know. And, and all these atheists and all that. Oh, I'm so sorry for those folks. I'm so far sorry. If I look up and see the sun. I see the stars. I see the moon. I see, I see the heavens. I say, what a God. And they said, oh, what a big bang theory. God help them. It's more than that. There is a God, and we love that God. And that God loves us, and that God says to me and you down here, praise me. Praise me. Praise me. Praise me. That's what he's saying. For they were, they were created. Well, did he not create us? Yeah. I believe that I believe he created Adam and Eve, and then I believe that he created me and he created you. He allowed that to happen, and we're just created by God. And the greatest of all creation is the spiritual creation, and that's what makes us all kin to one another. I'm not kin to you folks biologically, but you know what? I can call you my brother, I can call you my sister because we're from the same womb. That's right. It's called spiritual wound. It's being born again. So if I'm born again and son is born again, then son, are you my brother? Amen. We got the same father, right? right. And I can look at Nancy. And Nancy, I said, I say, Nancy, you're my sister. We're kin, right? Because we have the same father. Isn't that glory to God? I had to make you shout, praise, hey, God, amen. Now I'm telling you, hallelujah, we have, we can praise him. I feel good. I don't know about you, but I feel God. I want to praise him because of what he's done for me. I once was lost. I was wandering in a wilderness of sin. Now I'm saved. I once was blind. But glory to God, I see now. I see worlds. I see, I see things I never saw before. It's a spiritual vision. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They were created. Look at verse number Six, he has also established them forever and even and ever and hath made a decree which shall not pass. Do you know this earth was created forever? Do you know the earth will last forever? It's in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, I believe it. The earth is forever. I mean, you know, I know it's going to be cleansed. I understand that. I know God's going to cleanse it with fire and brimstone and take all the sinners and they're gone. And then the earth will be cleansed and put back. But the earth was, will, light, will reign forever. The stars and all that will last forever. Everything that he did was created forever. Did you know you were created forever? The very moment you took that breath of life, you were created forever. Amen. Ever. You're going to live somewhere, right? Amen. I hope it's heaven. Amen. If you're here today and you're not saved, you can't live in heaven until you're born again. But you will live forever, right? Amen. And ever and ever and ever in heaven or in hell, right? Forever and ever. And we're created forever, just like the stars and the moon and all. God revealed himself not only. Not only through the conscience, through the creation, he also revealed himself through the Christ. And I, I use the, the, the article the instead of a. Because you see, the is a definite article, a is an indefinite article. And because you could say uh, that God has revealed himself through, through a Christ, that's like saying there's many Christ. There's only one. And that's why I use the word the. Through the Christ. Matthew 17 and 5. I got a verse of scripture. And it says this, while he yet spake, 
Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice came out of the clouds. Now, this is when Jesus has been baptized in the River Jordan. And as, he, and as John was speaking, he said, this, and he said, this is my beloved son. That's God speaking. God speaking. So you see, God revealed the Christ, right? And the people were standing around and heard this voice, in whom I am well pleased. I'm well pleased with him up to this point. He's now starting the ministry. He came out of Nazareth. He came down to Jordan, and John was baptizing. I'm pleased with him. I'll tell you what you better do, though. You better hear him. You better listen to him. You better listen to him. Well, I'm here to tell you today, I'm a man of God, and I'm preaching the Word of God. You better listen to me, too. Now you better listen to the men of God that preach the Word of God. Because we are God's spokesmen today. Hear ye him. Listen to him. So, see, he did it through Christ. And Christ is the, the, the greatest thing that we've ever experienced is through Christ. You know, now, it's amazing to me. We, I love to sing these songs, the blood songs. You know, we sing them here. We, we haven't taken them out of the hymn books yet. Some of, some of the nominations have taken them out of the hymn books. But the blood, it is amazing about the blood. We got five quarts in our body. Five quarts of blood. And that blood's the only moving part of the body, you know. The others st usually stay, stay still. Every organ we got stands still, but the blood circulates. For the life is in the blood, right? Leviticus talked about that. For life is in the blood, the blood circulates. And the blood brings precious oxygen and, and various other things that feeds every cell in our body, right? Feeds every cell in our body, the blood. Goes through that. 23 seconds it takes to make it go. Keeps going on, on, and on, and on. 23 seconds. But it also picks up the toxins in our body too, right? The waste parts from the metabolism and that. It picks up the, the bad parts and puts them through our kidneys. We, 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 we get rid of it through our kidneys, through our bowels, and through our lungs. But it's amazing even that when the carbon dioxide, when we, and, and there's, this room's full of carbon dioxide right now. You know that? You're breathing, ain't you? Okay, that's carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide goes outside, gets into the leaves, and there's this metamorphosis that takes place. And you know what comes out of that? Them leaves out there and them oh, oxygen. Oh, how in the world could this just haphazardly happen? God did it, right? Hallelujah. I give you praise, God. What a creator you are. And the blood of Jesus, <laughs> whoo, boy, it flows. And, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us, right? In 1 John 1, 7, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us. Oh, I'll tell you, just as this five quarts goes through my body and cleanses and gets those toxins out and passes them through, the, through my lungs and, and through my uh, bowels and through my kidneys, well, let me tell you one thing, the blood of Jesus goes through and cleans out all the mess. When I get messed up, it cleanses me, right? It takes out the old bad part of it. And refreshes me every day. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. I want to tell you, I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Cleansed by it. Thank God, Jesus, boy, what a Savior. He revealed himself through his Son. He said, I'm well pleased. I'm well pleased. <clears throat> well, there's another one. We've looked at through the conscience. God reveals himself through the conscience. God reveals himself through the creation. God reveals himself through the Christ. And now, what would you think the next one would be? You agree with that? You know who that is, don't you? The comforter? Ain't that the Holy Spirit? So, through the conscience, through the creation, through the Christ, and now through the Comforter. So who? there's always been God in one way or the other on this earth, right? For 6,000 years. I'll oh, forget that million year stuff. That ain't right. Throw it out. Don't chunk that stuff. For 6,000 years, God has been on this earth. From the moment that he created this earth, he was sheer by God the Father by a cloud. That, that was cloud. That was God here. He was here, invisible, 
to a human. You don't see no human other than a theophany. Now, periodically, occasionally through the Bible, there were times that he revealed himself to Abraham as a human being, right? You understand that? That passage of Scripture where that he revealed himself as a human being and the angels come and they were as human beings and therefore that's how God revealed himself to Abraham. And he re revealed himself to Moses in what? A burning bush. And so here, now we've got, uh, we've, we, we come here to uh, Christ in the New Testament. We've got, he reveals himself through Christ. But Jesus said, now listen, I, I, I'm going away. And I think I've got that John 16 to 7. Let me see if I got the right, the right one on there. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is John saying, or Jesus, Jesus is talking. It is expedient. It is necessary. That's what the word expedient means. It is necessary for you that I go away. For if I go not away, if I stay here, the comforter will not come. He's not going to come if I stay here. But if I depart, I'll send him unto you, right? Now, that's different. We had a man here in human body that lived 33 years and only preached and ministered three years, and he revealed himself to the Jewish nation. And, of course, the Romans, they were in power at that time. So now we've got the revelation of God in a human form by the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And I think he did a wonderful job. Don't you? I think he did a wonderful job of revealing himself to the culture that he would have raised up in. However, they didn't believe him. They didn't accept him. And they don't today either. The majority of the people outside these walls in this, in this county, in this state, in the old United States, and the world, the majority don't believe in Jesus Christ. But he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit back. And he did. On the day of Pentecost, I believe I've got that verse of Scripture. Acts chapter 2, verse 2. And suddenly, now this is after Christ has ascended, he went on, stepped on the cloud, went up into heaven, and there with God forever. To be with him, sitting at the Father's right hand, been there for 1900 and about 1980 years, give or take a year or two, don't matter about that, but at least somewhere in that neighborhood. And so he's been there, and he said, then there was a sound from heaven as of a mighty, of a rushing mighty wind, of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And that was the inauguration of the Holy Spirit and the church age right then. That was it. That's when the church age was born. So here now we've got a comforter. Uh, it was cloven tongues of fire and it lit up on one of them. And it anointed these 120 people. 120 people, men and women. And therefore the church began that day. The church began that day. Probably around 37 A.D., somewhere thereabout. And the church is still in existence, still going. That's, now the Holy Spirit is revealing God, right? I knew nothing. I, well, I had an intellectual concept of God. I had that. But I didn't really know God in my heart or my spirit. Who did that? What? Well, all at once something changed in my life. All at once, there was something took place. I knew God. I wasn't an atheist. I, I, you may be some agnostic to some point. I say, maybe there is a God. I don't know. But boy, when the Holy Spirit of God began to knock at my heart's door, man, those things began to be different. He began to reveal to me who? God. That God was real and that Jesus was real. And there is a heaven to gain. And there's a hell to shun. Amen. Ain't that the work of the Holy Spirit? Y'all remember that in your life? Y'all remember that time when the Holy Spirit began to knock at your heart's door? And told you you was a sinner? And said you're lost? You need to be saved? Hallelujah, I wouldn't take nothing for that moment. Now, now you can say, yes, I do believe, I will accept. Holy Spirit said, I'm going to reveal to you these biblical truths. And I'm going to tell you, it was just like a, a movie. 
projected before my very eyes. And I said, oh, wow. And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes. I will take you as my Lord and Savior. And glory to God, if I had it to do over, I'd do it again, wouldn't you? That's been, I'm on my, I'm, I'm a lot closer to heaven than I was. Why is it the older we get, the colder we get spiritually? God help us. You ain't supposed, I don't care how old you get, you should never be cold spiritually. You should, we're closer to God than we ever have been, and we should be praising God more than we've ever praised God. Don't let the world dictate your worship. Don't let all this stuff going on outside and watching television get us all messed up. Don't let that dictate your worship of God. We come into this house, close the doors, and forget about what's going on out there. There ain't nothing you can do about it anyway. Just say, let's worship the Lord for what he has done. Now, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't dead, are you? No. No, thank God for the Holy Spirit that stirs our hearts and let us look into the fact that we are. I never will forget Ron Dunn, a great preacher, and I was at the Evangelism Conference and I think it was Durham or Raleigh somewhere years ago. And boy, this is about the way uh, he described it. Great preacher. He said, I, you know, these dignified Baptists. I said, yeah, I know some of them. He said, I guarantee you when them dignified Baptists, if they get to heaven, if they get there and they look around and see the glory all around and see the angels and see Jesus and see the choir, and he said, I believe it'll be more than, well, it sure is good to be here. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> it's good to be here. And if it's good to be here, it'll be far better over there, right? Far better over there. Because the best is yet to come. Well, I'm glad the Holy Spirit revealed Jesus to me, aren't you? I'm glad he showed me my lostness, my lostness. And then he said, oh, all you got to do is just believe in me. And I took it by faith. It's been a real good journey. It's been a wonderful journey. Through the church. Here's, here's a lesson. God reveals himself through the church. Matthew 16 and 16, 18. And Simon Peter answered and said, this is the last one. And he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, verse 17, answered him and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, for humans, that's flesh and blood means they're human beings, has not revealed this unto thee. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not revealing that unto you. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal it unto you. He said, flesh and blood did not reveal it unto you that I'm the Christ, the Son of the living God. See the, the word, Art, the definite word article, the Christ, the Son, the living God. Not a Christ, not a Son, not a God. The God, the one and only God. That's got the right language. I mean, got the right grammar there. And he says, for flesh and blood, that, that they didn't reveal that to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, and he did it through the Holy Spirit Amen. to us. To us, he did it through the Holy Spirit. And that's how he reveals Jesus today. And, and it's through the church. It's through the church here, but the Holy Spirit works through the church. And by the way, now that brings to another question. What's the church? You say, is this the church? No, you're the church. I'm the church. Because the word church is ecclesia, which is a Greek word that comes from called out ones. It's anybody that was in sin, that's been saved by God's grace, that God has gloriously saved and redeemed and brought them out of a life of sin into his family. That's called out ones. It's ecclesia. It's a born again child of God. That's the church. And that's you and that's me, right? Amen. Now we are supposed to be doing what? As the Holy Spirit has revealed himself to us, God. And we are to rejoice and praise God. And we are to reveal this Jesus to who? This world. This world out there. This lost world. They're to see Jesus in my face and my attitude and my actions and what I do and what I don't do. I'm to reveal Jesus to them and so are you. Do you understand the fact that when, and, and, and it's a verse of Scripture and, and, and I can't think, I see, where's that at? Luke 12, Luke, I know it's in Luke 12, 48. Where much is given, much is expected. Did you know, let me say this. Now listen to me. Where much is given, much is expected. 
Has God blessed this southern region what we live in? Amen. Okay, how's He blessed us? With Bible? Ain't this the Bible Belt? Do you understand that that's much and that's given by God? Okay, we've been given the Bible. We live in the Bible Belt of America. There are churches on every corner. There are churches everywhere where much is given, much is required. Now that brings me to this point. If we have that responsibility where God has blessed us here in the Bible Belt with all the wonderful opportunities to worship and we don't live up to that, what's God going to do to us? Much is given, much is expected. God expects the people in this area to reveal Him more than anywhere else because He's given us all of this Bible and preachers over the years. In our area, you go somewhere, they don't even have preaching. They don't even have churches, you know. In some countries, they, you, you can't even worship. But here, we've been given that responsibility. So much will be expected. That scares me. I want to do my best. Okay, God, much. You, you, you know, you've given me much, and I want, to, I want to give what I can. I want to reveal you to people through my attitude, through my walk, through my living. Through, I want to reveal you. I don't want people to look at me and say, well, you hypocrite, you. No, I want them to say, he's a man of God. I want to reveal Jesus, right? Because much has been given and much will be required. So that's how we reveal God. That's how we reveal God. And I say unto you, that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, we wasn't talking about Peter either. He wasn't talking about Peter. He didn't build the church on Peter, and Catholicism's got it all wrong. They're dead wrong. Amen. Dead wrong. Church wasn't built on Peter. Upon this rock, and that is Petra. Peter's name is Petros. You get Peter, that's Petros. That's a little rock. I've been to Petros prison. Visitor, thank God. Just visit our several times, preached on our several times. It's a big rock, Petros. You know, you know where Petros is at? Okay, been there many times. And the thing of it is, that rock, that's what that illustrates his name, Petros. But this word rock in the Greek text, you got Petros over here for Peter and Pet Petra over here. And I've been to both places. And I want to tell you, there's a world of difference between Petros, Tennessee, and Petra, Jordan. I mean, Petra Jordan is a huge rock. Man, I mean, it ain't, Petros can't come in, can't even get close to that place. It is so huge and so humongous, and I've walked all among it there. And yet, Jesus is saying, it's Petra. I'm the big rock, and you're the little rock. And the church is not built on Peter. It's built on Jesus Christ. It's built on him, and we've got to get it right. This is his church. Every church is a Bible-believing, godly church. It's His church. It's Jesus Christ's church. And let's rightly give Him that leadership ability. Amen. The gates of hell. And He says, I'll build my church. And He's been doing it for 1,980 years. And He built it. And He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail, prevail against it. It means overpower. The gates of hell. The councils of the word gates is just metaphorically meaning Demons. Satan and demons, they cannot overpower or prevail or overpower. It will never, church is not going down, Amen. it's going up. The true church. Denominations will go down, but the true church is going up. God has revealed himself, number one, through the conscience. Do you believe that? Amen. Okay, you believe that. What about through the creation? Can you agree with that? Amen, Amen. okay. What about through the Christ? Can you believe that? Oh, All right. Now, what about through the Comforter? Can you believe that? Yeah. And last of all, through the church? Are you revealing him? Are you revealing him? Am I revealing him? That's the question. It comes down to this. We 
are to reveal Jesus to the world. And the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to their hearts and their lives. Because looking at me and looking at you, and if they say, you don't live what you preach, you don't live what you teach, that could be the blood on somebody. I don't want their blood on my hands, do you? I don't want their blood on my hands. I want to live as godly as I can before them that they will not say, he's a hypocrite. I want to let them see Jesus in me. Amen. 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 And I know you do too. And let's do that. Stand with me for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I love you this morning, and I tell you that every day. There's not a day goes by I don't tell you I love you, and I mean it. You know whether I do or not. You look into my heart. You know. I do love you. I certainly love the church, love these people. Thank you, Lord. These people love you. They do. But I just talked about how that you have revealed yourself over the centuries of time. And, and even today, Lord, it laws our, our, our lot as a church to reveal you as individuals wherever we go. We should be inviting people to the church. And I hope every one of us would invite somebody. I hope we invited somebody to church this week. And God, if we didn't invite them this week, hopefully we'll invite them next week, God, that we can invite people to the house of the Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray. We can get them under the Word of God. That's what we need to do, God. We need to get them under the Word of God. So, Father, I pray this morning for you to do a work in our hearts. I don't know who's saved and who's lost in here. I don't know. But, Holy Spirit, you do. Now, I, I, have, I have revealed your, you to this congregation, Jesus, or God, through, through, through the conscience, through the creation, through the Christ, through the church. And, and, and Father, through the Comforter. I, and, and, and so, Holy Spirit, you're the Comforter now. So you go through and you stop at every heart's door and you reveal to them their lostness or their savedness, whatever. And if they are not saved and, God, they want to get saved, God, bring them down to this altar, God, and I'll show them how to do it. I'll be glad to lead them to you, Lord. Well, Father, they get saved right where they're at. You know, I don't know, but they need to tell it, God. At least come up here and tell me they got saved. God, Holy Spirit, work among us this morning. I will turn the service over to you. In Jesus' name, amen. One, 81, just as I am. Just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me. Ready? Does he want to get saved? Thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am and To rid my soul of one dark blood To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am I promise I believe the Lamb of God I come, I come just as I am without one plea but that thy blood 
was shed for me and that thou biddest me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I come so Derek here gave his heart to the Lord he got saved but he wanted to come here and let you know about it. Amen. Isn't that the evidence of salvation? Amen. Told his mama, I want to go and let this church know. Because you see, the seed was sowed here, right? It was planted here through Sunday school and through vacation Bible school to mom at home and all his family members. See, the seed was sowed. And uh, so Brother Holly's crowd got to reap it last night, but we're reaping it too. Amen. You asked Jesus to come into your heart, didn't you, Derek? Okay, look at me. Let me, let me get my Bible here just a minute. This is, I always like to do this. Put your hand on the Bible. And say, I confess, I confess Jesus, Christ Jesus Christ as my Lord, as my Lord and, Savior. and Savior. Amen. See, Amen. he said, hallelujah. <laughs> Give him a hand. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> See, that, that's what it says, right? <laughs> in, in Romans 10, 9, it says, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, he's done, done that over there at, uh, you know, at, at Severe Heights, but he done it here too. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, my brother. <laughs> now, you just grow in the Lord, okay? You keep growing in the Lord. And, and, and there's a lot you don't know about the Bible yet, but you'll learn, okay? You just keep going to Sunday school, learn that, and, and, and grow in it. And one of these days, you might make a preacher. Would you, yeah, you'd like to make a preacher. We need good preachers like you. Yeah. We need good preachers. Amen. Might be a choir director like Earl. Yeah, might be a Sunday school teacher like Sonny. I don't know. But I hope it's something God can use you in, okay? Bless you, buddy. Amen. All right, amen. Okay, now we're going we're gonna to come back here. He's going to go with me, and we're going to let you shake hands with him. Okay, let me get this off here. I got to get unhorned here just a little. Now, don't forget to serve us uh, tonight. Six o'clock, we'll have a regular worship service tonight. Now, uh, Wednesday night, is that when they're going to, the youth are going to practice? And our Wednesday night Bible, Bible study will be in, I believe, in Sunday's room down there. Well, they, they're, they're doing, over in the fellowship hall, they're doing the, uh, the Christmas uh, cards. Now, we thought that, but I think we did it last time in your room. I believe that's enough room for us. The Wednesday night crowd and Bible study, well, we'll do it in uh, Sunday's room, okay? Because the youth are going to be here uh, practicing. And then they'll be doing the cards in the, over there in the fellowship hall. Okay? All right. Brother J.L.? Let me get on Hornish here and uh